Hello dear students, in today's lecture we are going to learn about Jamia Milia Islamia. Before moving to the topic, let's know its objectives. First, to study the historical development of Jamia Milia Islamia. Second, to study the aims and objectives of Jamia Milia Islamia. Third, to study the courses of studies offered in Jamia Milia Islamia. Fourth, to study the motto of Jamia Milia Islamia. Fifth, to study its present position. And sixth, to study about the notable alumni of Jamia Milia Islamia. Jamia Milia Islamia acquires great significance for being one of the most important educational institutions which were established during the course of freedom struggle in India. Jamia was established by a group of nationalist Muslims on 29th October 1920 at Aligad, Uttar Pradesh. Since then, the university has expanded and become known as a premier educational institution of the country. Now let's learn about historical development of Jamia Milia Islamia. The struggle for freedom in British India entered its most crucial phase in 1920 when it brought in an exceedingly large number of Indian masses into its fold. It was the time when the non-cooperation movement was launched jointly by the Indian National Congress and the Khilafat Committee, which galvanized nearly the entire subcontinent. These dominant trends joined hands and contributed towards the birth of Jamia. The anti-colonial activism signified by the Khilafat and the pro-independence aspirations symbolized by the non-cooperation movement of the Indian National Congress helped to harness creative energies and the subsequent making of Jamia Milia Islamia. Rabindranath Tagore called it one of the most progressive educational institutions of India. Responding to Gandhiji's call to boycott all educational institutions supported or run by British, a group of nationalist teachers and students quit Aligad Muslim University, protesting against its pro-British inclinations. The prominent members of this movement were Molana Mahmood Hassan, Hakim Ajmal Khan, Molana Muhammad Ali, Dr. Mukhtar Ahmed Ansari, and Abdul Majid Khwaja. On 22nd November 1920, Hakim Ajmal Khan was elected the first Chancellor of Jamia. Muhammad Ali Johar became Jamia's first Vice Chancellor as Allama Iqbal could not accept the offer made through Gandhiji. Born out of political crisis, it seemed for a while Jamia would not survive the heat of the intense political struggle for the independence of India. In 1922, Gandhiji called off the non-cooperation movement. Suddenly, Jamia saw itself in a great crisis. Some thought it had achieved its mission as others believed that the institution had lost its purpose with the end of the non-cooperation and the Khilafat movements. Even the little financial assistance that the Khilafat had been giving it also dried up. As even prominent people started deserting it, Jamia's total collapse virtually became an imminent possibility. The saying, when going gets tough, the tough gets going, cannot be true about Jamia. As the crisis loomed large, Hakim Ajmal Khan, Dr. Mukhtar Ahmad Ansari and Abdul Majid Khwaja, the first trio supported by Gandhiji, shifted Jamia from Aliga to Karolbagh in New Delhi in 1925. Gandhiji boosted the morale of Jamia, saying, The Jamia has to run. If you are worried about its finances, I will go about with a bagging ball. During those difficult days, it was Hakim Ajmal Khan who met most of the Jamia's expenses from his own pocket. Dr. M. A. Ansari and Abdul Majid Khwaja toured India and abroad, explaining the importance of Jamia and collecting funds for this noble enterprise. In 1925, after long deliberation, a group of three friends studying in Germany, Dr. Zakir Hussain, Dr. Abid Hussain and Dr. Muhammad Mujib decided to serve Jamia. In Jamia, Dr. Zakir Hussain was offered a salary of Rs 100. His two other friends with European qualifications were offered Rs 300 each. 
Realizing that the possibility of making payments was beyond Jamia's limited resources, Abid Hussain and Muhammad Mujib voluntarily reduced their salaries to rupees 100 each. Moved by the commitment of his friends, Dr. Zakir Hussain also reduced his own salary to rupees 80. One of the first steps they took was the introduction of the hugely popular evening classes for adult education. In 1928, Hakim Ajmal Khan passed away. That was the beginning of the second financial crisis, as it was Hakim Sahab himself who had been meeting most of Jamia's financial needs. The leadership of Jamia then moved into the hands of Dr. Zakir Hussain, who became its vice chancellor in 1928. To resolve Jamia of these frequent crises, a group of young Jamia teachers led by Dr. Zakir Hussain took a pledge to serve Jamia for the next 20 years on a salary not more than rupees 150. This group was called the Life Members of Jamia. History repeated in 1942 when a second group of Jamia teachers took a similar pledge. On 1st March 1935, the foundation stone for a school building was laid at Okla then a non-descript village in the southern outskirts of Delhi. In 1936, all institutions of Jamia except Jamia Press, the Maktaba and the library were shifted to the new campus. The basic emphasis of Jamia was on evolving innovative education methods. This led to the establishment of a teacher's college, Ustadonka Madrasa, in 1938. In 1936, Dr. M. A. Ansari passed away. On 4th June 1939, Jamia Milia Islamia was registered as a society. The fame of Jamia as an innovative education movement spread and dignitaries from foreign countries began visiting Jamia. Foreigners impressed by Jamia began working in Jamia. The German lady, Ms. Gerda Philipsborn, popularly known as Appa Jan, served Jamia for many years and is buried in Jamia. The rights following partition that shook the northern India did affect Jamia but not its campus. Gandhi observed that its campus remained an oasis of peace in the Sahara of communal violence. After the attainment of independence, Jamia continued to grow as an academic institution with a difference. Many famous foreign personalities made it a point to visit Jamia Milia Islamia during their visits to New Delhi. Following the death of Mr. Abdul Majid Khwaja in 1962, Dr. Zakir Hussain, who by then had taken charge as the Vice President of India, became Jamia's Chancellor in 1963. In 1962, the University Grants Commission declared the Jamia deemed to be university. Soon thereafter, the School of Social Work was established in 1967. In 1971, Jamia started the Zakir Hussain Institute of Islamic Studies to honor Dr. Zakir Hussain, who had passed away in 1969. BE course in civil engineering commenced in 1978. In 1981, the faculties of humanities and languages, natural sciences, Social Science and the State Resource Center were founded. In 1983, it started the Mass Communication Research Center and the Center for Coaching and Career Planning. In 1985, it established the Faculty of Engineering and Technology and the University Computer Center. Academic Staff College and the Academy of Third World Studies followed in 1987 and 1988. By a special act of the parliament, Jamia Milia Islamia was made a Central University of India in December 1988. In the list of the faculties that is, Education, Humanities and Languages, Natural Sciences, Social Sciences, Engineering and Technology, one more faculty, Faculty of Law was added in 1989. Many new courses and programs at UG and PG levels have since been added. Besides its nine faculties, the Jamia has a number of centers of learning and research like AJK Mass Communication Research Center, Academy of International Studies, etc. The Jamia is also marching ahead in the field of information technology. It offers various undergraduate and postgraduate IT courses. 
Apart from this, the Jamia has a campus-wide network which connects a large number of its departments and offices. Now let's learn about the aims and objectives of Jamia Millia Islamia. Hakim Ajmal Khan, while addressing the first convocation of the Jamia Millia Islamia held at Aligad on 7 December 1921, emphasized the need of producing a special type of people who may ensure the continuity of Islamic culture. An analysis of statements of the founders of Jamia Millia Islamia pertaining to aims and objectives would lead to the conclusion that the Jamia stood for the following objectives. First, pursuance of Islam is equally good for temporal and spiritual life. So, the study of Islam needs to be integral part of the scheme of studies in Jamia Millia Islamia. Second, education serves the function of perpetuation of culture. This function can be best served if education is imparted through one's own language. In Jamia, all education needs to be imparted through Urdu. Third, to remove the distinction between man and man due to different professions, to instill feelings of dignity of labor and give some training for earning livelihood, students should be initiated into a profession during the period of education. Fourth, to harmonize the Islamic culture with the world culture. The student should learn to live in harmony with members of other religions, thereby developing love for the people and the country they live in. Fifth, to produce such Muslims who are not only acquainted with their religion but practice it rigorously, who are fully familiar with their past and are aware of their future, who understand purpose of the existence of their nation and their own existence in this world, and who may enter into the ranks of Islamic missionaries as useful members. They definitely need to be familiar with modern knowledge, but should themselves be specimen of Islamic way of life. They should not depend on others, meaning government, for earning their livelihood and should lead the life of a self-respecting Muslim. Now let's learn about the courses of studies. Jamia was following the scheme of studies outlined by Molana Muhammad Ali. The courses offered by the Jamia taught in 1923 are given in the prospectus of the session 1923 to 24, when Jamia Millia Islamia was still in Aligad. According to prospectus, there were four stages of education later that is, maktab, primary, secondary, and university. The maktab covers the courses including reading and writing of alphabets, counting and oral lessons in religion and morals. The duration of the course was of one year. Primary education stage was of five years and child was taught theology, arithmetic, copywriting and science, history, geography and constitution of the country. Second stage was of five years duration. The compulsory subjects in this stage were theology, Arabic, Urdu and Hindi, English, mathematics and vocation. The optional subjects in secondary stage were history of India, outline of world geography, drawing and science. Hindu students were taught Hindu ethics and Sanskrit in place of theology and Arabic respectively. There were two courses of study during university stage. One is the honors degree course and second is the ordinary degree course. The duration of the course was of three years after passing the preliminary examination or four years after passing the matriculation examination. After passing the preliminary examination, student was allowed to take admission either in BA Honours or BA. BA Honours was the prestigious course. Theology was the compulsory subject in that course and any one of the following subject for an in-depth study. Islamic studies, Arabic language and literature, Persian language and literature, English language and literature, philosophy, sociology, chemistry, physics, history and law. Now dear students, let's talk about Jamia's motto. Right on the top is a star with the inscription Allahu Akbar. The star of Allahu Akbar is the guiding star of Jamia. Its eyes are fixed on this star which shows it the path in the darkling world. Beneath this glittering star is a book with the inscription Allamal insana malam yalam taught man that which he knew not. 
This is the Holy Quran. This book led a man from darkness to light. On either side of the book are the two date trees typical of the land where God's last prophet was born. They are symbolic of the barren valley in which nothing grew. These trees are emblem of hope from a land in which not a leaf or flower could sprout, but wherein suddenly the springs of Hidayah burst forth and drenched the communities of the heart. At the very bottom is a tiny silver crescent which reads Jamia Milia Islamia. This crescent is small, but just as it expands to become the full moon on the 14th night, so also Jamia, meaning that this is the beginning of our work. It will expand to become the full moon and a source of delight for the ew of its beholder. Now let's learn about the present status of Jamia Milia Islamia. Today, Jamia Milia Islamia is an ensemble of multi-layered educational system which covers all aspects of schooling, undergraduate and postgraduate education. The university recognizes that teaching and research are complementary activities that can advance its long-term interest. Jamia Milia Islamia also has started several research centers that have given an edge to Jamia in terms of critical research in various areas. Obviously, these initiatives aim to promote new and emerging areas of research and programs that can offer opportunities to its students and teachers to expand their horizons. Now, let's learn about the faculties of Jamia Milia Islamia. Jamia Milia Islamia has nine faculties under which it offers academic and extension programs. The faculties are Faculty of Law, Faculty of Engineering and Technology Faculty of Architecture Faculty of Humanities and Languages Faculty of Fine Arts Faculty of Social Sciences Faculty of Natural Sciences Faculty of Education and Faculty of Dentistry Research Centers. It includes AJK Mass Communication Research Center, Center for Nanoscience and Nanotechnology, and Center for Management Studies. Schools. Jamia Milia Islamia also imparts education from nursery to senior secondary levels. The schools are Balak Mata Centers. Gerda Phillips Bond Daycare Center, Mushir Fatima Jamia Nursery School, Jamia Middle School, Jamia Senior Secondary School, Sayyid Abid Hussain Senior Secondary School, and Jamia Girls Senior Secondary School. Now, let's learn about the library of Jamia Milia Islamia. The main central library of the university is known as Dr. Zakir Hussain Library with its collection of about 4 lakh artifacts including books, microfilms, periodical volumes, manuscripts and rare books. The library is open to all bona fide students of Jamia. Beside this, there are subject wise collection in libraries of some faculties and centers. The number of students in Jamia is 23,000 plus, of which 12,000 plus are enrolled in undergraduate courses, 4,000 plus in post graduation, and 1,000 plus are doctoral students. The strength of academic staff is 800 plus and that of administrative staff is 1200 plus. The present Chancellor of Jamia Milia Islamia is Lieutenant General Retired M. A. Zaki and Vice Chancellor is Professor Talat Ahmed, former VC of Kashmir University. The university has many centers of learning right from the nursery school to faculties and research centers. It strives to maintain the standards of excellence in teaching and research. Now let's learn about some notable alumni of Jamia Milia Islamia. Shah Rukh Khan, Bollywood actor. 
वीरेंद्र सहवाग इंडियन क्रिकेटर बरखा दत्त एन डी टी वी एडिटर एंड जर्नलिस्ट विकास जैन को फाउंडर माइक्रोमैक्स सुकेश जैन सीईओ एयरटेल एंटरप्राइज सर्विसेज सैयद अंसारी डिप्टी एडिटर एंड एंकर आज तक True to the ideals of its founders, Jamia has over the years tried to integrate the physical and mental development of its students. Like the other universities, the Jamia Millia Islamia has kept itself abreast with development in education, social sciences, natural sciences, engineering and technology. Today, Jamia not only attracts students from different parts of India but is also a favorite educational destination for many foreign students. So dear students that was all in today's lecture hope you have liked it it's time to say goodbye stay blessed